Today on The Grid, we are talking about 10 things photographers can do while we're all stuck indoors. Eric the Rocket Man Coon is here. We're taking your questions and comments live on the air. We're practicing social distance. And we've got some giveaways too. And it all starts in just 60 seconds. Grid is brought to you by Tamron. Check out their 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 lens. It's for Sony full frame mirrorless. It's awesome. Go to tamron-usa.com. And Profoto, the light shaping company. Check out the Profoto B1X, powered all the right places. Go to profoto.com slash US. And Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Well, hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Empty Grid Set. Uh, my name is Scott Kelby, and uh, we are live. And joining me is Eric Kuna on a different set over hey. there. Hey, guys. How's it going? So I can see Eric from where I'm at. Hey, Eric. Hey, how's it going? It's good, man. We're, we're a good, uh, what, about 15 feet? Oh, we're about 15 feet. Maybe and uh, we've also yeah. got the booth down to just Jason. So Ron and Jason are separated. We're all practicing uh, social distance to keep safe here. Yep. Uh, we, uh, everybody here at Kelby One uh, is working at home, so we're, we're on a work at home thing, but we, we came in for this broadcast, but we're all staying well the heck away. And we did, we did our own makeup, which is why I look so great. <laughs> it's hard to do your own makeup, it's just weird. And oh yeah, definitely. You're kind of just doing it blind. Anyway, um, but uh, lots to talk about today. Of course, it's, it's such a weird time, it's just, it's a weird time to be talking about photography because I mean, all you want to talk about is this horrible virus mm -hmm. and how it's affecting everybody's lives. It's of course affecting ours. It's affecting all of our live events. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to photoshopworld.com, you can uh, check out a video I made to talk about Photoshop World uh, and what we've had to do with that and our, our live uh, seminars. Our live seminars. Thank you. That's yep. the word I'm looking for. Yep. Our live seminars. So I'm supposed to be next week in Los Angeles and in Houston, and of course, I, I'm not going to go. Uh, the Los Angeles Convention Center is closed. I don't want to fly. But um, what was very, very cool is the folks that have signed up are almost all going to be uh, uh, letting me live stream it. So I'm live streaming, same time, same date, just to Los Angeles. I'm going to do the whole seminar again just for uh, Houston on the 23rd and Los Angeles on the 25th. So if you're in one of those cities, you can still come and, and join. But it's, we're only allowing those cities so those are um, those are coming up, and and I'm going to do the whole seminar just like I'm, you know, I'm there with you. Mm -hmm. uh, we're shipping out workbooks to everybody because we've got a 153-page printed workbook and a digital workbook and a whole bunch of stuff. So anyway, uh, we're we're you know we're, yeah we already actually shipped out the workbooks. We shipped out the workbooks. Registered uh, a couple of people have already got them. So. Oh great. Yeah. Well, I think. As bad as things are, we're fortunate that we're in the online business and that we can still do some of these things. And so yeah. I, I, we're all kind of stuck indoors. It's, it's really weird. So that's what we wanted to do today, was we wanted to do some things that photographers can do. We're all kind of limited what we can shoot, right? We really can't go out shooting. We can't do shoots and stuff. So um, what we wanted to do was, was come up with that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, there's, there's definitely stuff that we can do, like just, um, you know, in this kind of state where, you know, we're you know, limited, uh, that we can really do to kind of, you know, better ourselves, maybe take that time. A lot of times there's things I think on this list that it's the things you wish you had time to do, but you never really have time to do, right? Now we do. And now we do. Now we have time. Unfortunately, now we do. So. so we take you live to Eric, who is in South Carolina. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, Eric know, is like right? right there, but when I look at you, it feels like you're far away, but yep. I could walk over there. Yeah. You'd see me running around back behind him, good six or eight feet back there. Uh, anyway, a couple things I do want to talk about. Uh, the uh, Platyball thing ended. So last week, the Kickstarter ended. They were trying to raise $18,000 to make it happen. What did they wind up with? 528000 over a half a million dollars. So congratulations to the folks at Platy Platyball uh, and Platypod. Great, great stuff. Uh, Larry and T. And I'll is, say something about that. So I was out shooting today. I was shooting a launch this morning uh, at eight o'clock, 
and I wish I would have had one of those putty balls. I was having such a hard time with getting uh, my composition. It would do that thing, you know, with a ball head where it just creep where up creeps or just creep a down little bit. a little bit. Oh. And that platter ball locks in like really, really tight. No, it does. So I can't wait to get one because it, it was just so frustrating. Finally got it, but it's like you're fighting with it for a good 10 so minutes. So you shot a launch this morning? I did, I shot a launch this morning. I'm back over here today. Whoa, yeah. so. do you got any pictures? Yeah, I got pictures. So. Can you show us real quick? Yeah, sure. Let's see. Um, I didn't even know you shot a launch. Yeah, you know, we didn't really talk about it. Um, <laughs> we talked about everything else in the world. <laughs> uh, here's, here's the shot. Uh, well, it's in Photoshop right now because I've got Photoshop. But, uh, oh, I got to turn on probably uh, my control room thing, huh? No, I see. We see it. Well, that's one of the shots. That's one. Um, well, that's a cool shot. Yeah, so that's like uh, the the Falcon 9's passing through uh, Transonic. So it's doing like the vapor cloud when kind of like what jets do when they yeah, go. Yeah, the vapes, on it. man. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, all right, so I think I'm connected over here. Here's another shot we did. So this is the, um, I actually, this is one where I had to go to my backup location. So what ended up happening was I was supposed to go to this location, which I shot this weekend. Yeah. Uh, when it went before it scrubbed, where it was right up near the rocket about four miles away. Uh, the problem is when I pulled up to the gate uh, this morning, which was supposed to be open, NASA security had closed it down. So uh, NASA security closed down the national park that was supposed to be open. Why? Uh, you know, they do that sometimes. So that's why I always have a backup location. Okay, well, that so, was good. So we were going to shoot. That was kind of going to be the shot I was going for this morning, but I ended up Dude, having... what time were you there? Well, this was this weekend. Then I, okay. what I had to do is go much farther away. So... This was my backup location. That's actually at... Can you make that bigger? Can you zoom? That's, that's 500. There you go. Uh, that's at 500 millimeters. And Ooh, then yeah. it, there's actually... That's a streak shot from the location. Oh, I so, like that. Yeah. Um, so that was a little different. That's a daytime streak. Uh, very interesting because you got to do the uh, stacking NDs and, oh, and stuff yeah. like that and balancing. Uh, and then this is uh, the this is the zoomed in 800 millimeters from eight miles away. So wow, yeah, very cool. I mean, it was, right. it was an interesting location because uh, I had I had never shot here before, but it's always been on my Google Maps as a pin of like, hey, if I ever need a spot, I should go check this out. Go check it out. Pulled up. It was beautiful. So wow, good for out. you. Well done. Yeah. All righty, so, uh, hey, I, I wanted to mention one thing I forgot about the, uh, about the Plata Ball. If you missed out on the Kickstarter, you're not going to get the low prices of the Kickstarter, but they're still selling it. You can still buy it on Indiegogo before it's available. So if you go to Indiegogo, search for Plata Ball, not pod, but Plata Ball, you'll find it there. It's not as cheap as it was on Kickstarter because that's the Kickstarter thing, but you can still pick it up there before it, it does ship. So... Uh, let's see. All right, you ready for 10 things? Yeah, 10 things. Let's go. All right, I'm going to give you my first one. And, and yep. this is one where I talk to a lot of people, and I, you guys have heard me on my seminar tour. I'm very passionate about printing and why we should print. I think it's, it's so important. I don't think it's ever been more important than it is today. But uh, this is the time to get your images together and start printing. Now you finally got the time to format them and get them all ready and get them in. And what I'm, what we're going to do, because I'm, if I can, can I slide this in on, yeah, on yeah, my yeah, printing yeah. thing? So we here at Kelby One, uh, you know, you guys know that we do webinars just for our members. They're private webinars and stuff. But to kind of help out, because we know we can't all get out and do stuff, we're going to be doing a series of, of public webinars. So the same webinars that we would do for our member, we're going to invite everybody while this virus thing is here. Uh, once the virus is behind us, then we'll go back to being members only. But for right now, we're inviting everybody. So uh, Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time, I'm going to do an entire webinar on how to get your images ready for print at a photo lab. So this is, you don't have your own printer. Well, actually, everything will work for your own printer up until the end when I take it to a lab. Not only am I gonna, gonna take you through the whole process from here's the image you know, in Lightroom or whatever, we're gonna set it up, we're gonna do the layout, we're gonna do sharpening, everything we need to do to get it ready to go to print. I'm actually gonna send it to print and we're gonna give away one of the prints. The print that we do, we're gonna give away as a gift to someone watching live. We're also gonna give you some free classes to watch as well. So 
come on fr on, on Friday at 11 a.m. Everyone's welcome. We're not going to ask you for a credit card. There's no sales pitch. There's none of that stuff. Just come. We're all going to hang out. We're just photographers trying to help each other through this. And it's I think be, that, that was the big fun. point with it is that, you know, when we met about this, we were like, you know what? I mean, um, it's just devastating what's happening to a lot of people right now, um, especially uh, we see it in our lives because we do a lot of uh, events as well. Sure. We're seeing uh, event people in our lives. I mean, just a lot of people. Uh, well, having who's their shooting lives. weddings? Yeah, Who's wedding weddings? photographers, exactly. Real Everybody's, estate, what are you shooting? No one's shooting anything. It's a very hard time. So it's like, what we were like, what can we do uh, to help people? Uh, and this is like, this is the thing that we we're like, well, we can, we can do this. I mean, I know it's not, it's not a lot. I mean, it, it, it's what we can do. Like, it's what we can yeah. do. And it's what we do. So we yeah. thought this is a natural thing for us to be yep. able to try to kind of get you through this. So all <laughs> those things, think about this, because we're going to be doing a number of these. All those things that you said, you know, one day when I get the time, we're starting with printing. So come and join us. It's free. Exactly. And that's what I think is really cool is I think all the things that we're going to be covering are those things that you, you're like, oh, yeah, I wish I would have done that. Or, oh, yeah, I wish I had time to do that. And speaking of, we've got those 10 things today that are really cool. Right. So my yeah. first one is let's do some printing. You've been meaning to do it for a long time. You've been wanting to do it. Let's get your images together. Find your images that you really want to print. And gather them together. Meet me Friday. I'll get you through the process. Now, you may already be good at printing. You may have your own printer. You may already be working with a lab. But if you're not, I'll, I'll work with you on all that stuff on Friday. But that's just one to kind of get us going is number one. Number two is an important one. I cannot tell you how many photographers I talk to that are not backed up. They're just not backed up. They're like, I'm like, are you really backed up? And they're like, well, I mean, I'm, I'm mostly backed up. I'm kind of backed up. This mm -hmm. is your chance to actually get really backed up. Get everything on one drive. Don't have it on 10 drives. You will never know peace with your backup if you have it on more than one drive. You know what? Order a big drive. I saw, to Eric, four terabyte drive, $89. Yep. A Western Digital, four terabytes. 89 bucks for yep. ter not not gigabytes yep. terabytes go buy one drive 89 bucks western digital i use western digital drives i've had great success with them mm -hmm. get all your stuff on one drive just get it on one drive and then while you're doing this if you really want to be smart about this get a second drive Get two drives, one that for your backup and one for a backup of your backup. Because if, you're, if a drive dies, then you're, you're stuck. So I keep one at home and one at the office. I have two drives. They're identical. They have the same stuff on them. Uh, so anyway. Yeah, well, and then on top of that, then it's uh, having an online backup. Yeah, cloud of backup. backup. So like either like a Backblaze or a Google Drive or some kind of some kind of backup of your backup. Yeah, if you're a Kelby One member, go watch my class called my Lightroom Simplified Image Management, uh, li Simplified Lightroom Image Ma Slim. It's my Slim. Slim system. The whole first part of it is about backing up, and I go into all of that in great detail. But for now, what, if you're not a Kelby member, go buy. They're four terabytes, 89 bucks. Get two, get two. You don't have to see anybody. Have the have the Amazon person leave it on your doorstep. Yep. <laughs> Just leave it and walk away. Did you know Pizza Hut and Domino's have contact-free delivery now? You can choose it in their app, and they will leave the pizza at your door and run like hell. It's like, come on. Yep. Amazon will do the same thing. Amazon does it anyway. They just leave a package and they run, and they just wait for someone to steal it. But anyway... That's number two. So number two is, this is a great time to actually get backed up. Now, Eric's moderating yeah, I mean, the yeah, comments like, over there. Like Gabe saying something about like Costco has an uh, eight terabyte drive for 125 bucks. <gasps> eight so. terabytes for 125? Now, you know, somebody else, uh, uh, there's another comment that I saw in here saying, what happens if you shoot over a half million images for your files and stuff like that? What okay, is, half millioner. You buy more, what do you think? You buy more space. Come on. 
Yeah. So if, you're, if you shoot a half million images, then obviously, just do the math, four terabytes isn't going to be enough. Thanks for making everybody and else then, feel and then bad, obviously, though. Then well Tim, done. Tim Wallace is commenting that people, Tim! Are, uh, people are mostly backing everything up on toilet rolls at the moment, <laughs> it would appear. <laughs> Dude, you know what we found online? What's that? A box of 96 Russian toilet paper rolls. It's the kind of stuff they only, do in a, they only use in a Russian prison. <laughs> you still get it? <laughs> From some restaurant supply place. You're in a toilet paper. Give me a shout. I got you covered. You're not going to like it, but it's toilet paper. There you go. 96 rolls. Well. I didn't want to go to Publix or, or, you know, Costco, take them off the shelves where people need. This is ordered from some restaurant supply place. Uh, well, they're telling us we do have to take a break. Oh, a um, break? Should we do that? Yeah, and when we get back, I want to try to tell Jason that I think there's a, there's a good comment. I think they should switch our positions because... You're looking at me and I'm looking at you, but we're opposite on the screen. Oh. So you're looking off the screen this way and I'm looking off the screen. I wonder if he can do that. Way. He's I magic. I bet Jason can do that. Jason can break. do many things. He's a wizard. Yeah. He's a we'll digital see. surgeon. We'll see. When we come back, if we're swapped, don't freak out. <laughs> I want to be over there. <laughs> Is the tripod dead? Sure, a tripod works for basic shots, but who wants to be basic? You don't need basic, you need Blockbuster. And that's a job for a Platypod. The Platypod is your go anywhere, do anything flat tripod base. Its compact design helps you discover unique angles that you could never reach with a typical tripod. So, whether you're bringing up baby, driving Miss Daisy, or with your beasts of the southern wild, you can capture big budget footage and stills for a fraction of the time and money. So go ahead, shoot the next Rocky or Birdman. Or on the waterfront, the Platypod is equipped to grip uneven surfaces and hang from just about anything. When tripods go low, the Platypod goes lower. Its flat base reaches the lowest possible angle, resulting in truly inventive shots that can't be replicated with traditional equipment. And if you feel like adding a dramatic overhead angle, the Platypod has you covered. Just strap it or screw it in, and you're ready to go within minutes. The Platypod is constructed from aircraft-grade aluminum and titanium. Yeah, the stuff Air Force One is made of. So it's durable enough to travel with you from Chinatown to Casablanca and everywhere in between. If you only take the tripod, the story ends. You wake up the next morning with nothing but basic footage. Or you could take the Platypod to a museum, or on an elevator, or strap it to a tree, or hang it on a bench at church or put it on the ground and get incredible blockbuster footage. Who are we kidding? You should totally take the Platypod. The tripod is not dead, but it needs a sidekick. The Platypod. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. What is the next one? Cleaning. All right, we're back. Oh, we're back. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hi. And, and speaking Hi. of being back, there's some questions for you, Scott. Oh, let's we got some questions? Let's see if we're... Oh, hey, did they, hey they swapped it. We're switched. All right, cool. All right, all right. Let's look at each other. Here we go. So this is the thing. we got some questions coming in. we got a question from... Uh, Natalie, and she's asking, do you prefer desktop or portable storage drives? 
it, it doesn't. It doesn't. I don't really have a, a preference for either. I have a uh, a Drobo D5, I think it's called, or a something five R5, something letter five. I've got a Drobo. I got two of them. One at the office. One at home. Has multiple bays. I, I have one that has like five bays. One that has eight bays. I just keep putting bigger drives and bigger drives in them. So, um, but I also have portable drives. I mean, I've got some, you know, two terabyte and four terabyte that I take with me on the road. I don't really think it much matters. I mean, okay. it's a drive's a drive. So, because uh, Ben's asking, uh, long, uh, what's the difference uh, between a regular external drive and a RAID system? So a RAID system is a more complicated. It is a redundant system that kind of backs up for you kind of keeps, does it keep multiple? Well, see, that's the hard thing with RAID. I, I, it can back up for you. It can stripe for you to make your drives faster. Uh, yeah, it, it depends on how you configure it. For you. You, it, it depends on how you configure it. It, uh, it's, it. It's so many different options, but it's basically either to back up in parallel in or parallel. to make it faster, you know? Yeah, but uh, I, you would use it, you would use a RAID for backing up in parallel. Correct. If but you're doing it when that you way. buy one of those drives, you have to format it for that. But that's what's kind of weird about that, like because then if like the RAID controller goes bad, like you then have yeah, a yeah. You know who would be a great guy? Lyle is probably watching out there. Yeah. And Lyle knows all this stuff deep. So Lyle, if you're watching, help us out on the what's the difference between a RAID? Because it is a redundant thing, but it is weird too. Yeah, because there's RAID zero, which is that mirrored. And then there's RAID 1, which yeah, is... Yeah, you need strike. to ask smarter people, yeah. I think. It's, if Lyle's watching, I mean, he'll, he'll honestly, pop in now, there. And nowadays, it he'll is He'll save hard. us. Especially when you get into solid-state drives now. I mean, they're just so fast that I don't know the... I mean, I've got Ron over here. I mean... I, yeah. I haven't done any RAID. Yet, so okay, Terry. Bad. All right, Terry White just popped yep. in here. All right, Terry yep. White says, RAID is not a backup. And then Sue says, I use RAID for roaches. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Boom. There it is. Well, Terry, explain. He says, it's, 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 okay, this is, yes, it's protection against a drive failing. Correct. Which is more like what a Drobo does. If a drive goes bad, it moves your, your, your information to a backup. Well, it, it's, it is a form of it because it's protection. Terry's right, though. It's, it is protection. It's not... It's not yeah. a straight backup. Yeah, see, Lyle's at which level of RAID. There's so many different options. Oh, see, Lyle is um, on there, isn't he? Um, I knew then, he would know. Now, there's a question here. And see, I think you've struck a chord. And this is why I think uh, when you do that webcast in the future, because one of them on the list mm -hmm. is this very subject where we can get in-depth in it. Uh, because the question is, do you store your Lightroom catalog on OneDrive or all of them? My Lightroom catalog stays on my desktop computer. If I put it on an external drive, it's going to run slower, and you're going to see a, a performance hit. So I keep, I always keep my Lightroom catalog here. Now, my catalog is backed up. I have a backup of my catalog, so I know that if my computer were to crash or get stolen, I still have my, my catalog. But I keep it on my computer, we're on, on an, you know, my internal, I have an internal SD drive. It's super fast. All right, so it's sounding like we're going to get more in-depth in this and, more, and then one of those webcasts coming up. So that's where if you want to tune into one of those webcasts, just follow us on social. Uh, if you're on Scott Kelly, if you're on their page right now, make sure you're following it so you can get the announcements of when it comes. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be doing it there too. Yep. Or go to, uh, we'll be broadcasting it on kelby1.com forward slash webcast, the webcast. Yeah, I didn't give that address earlier. It is yeah. kelby1.com slash webcast on Friday. But I can tell you the best way is to follow us on those social platforms because that's we'll where you're going to get the, you're going to get the notifications and you're going to get that. Yeah. So, follow so, us on Twitter. Follow Kelby1 yep. online if you're on Facebook or Kelby1 on Twitter. Follow me, follow Eric, follow any of us. So yeah, definitely going to get into backing up. So um, the next thing, uh, you know, while we're in this period of, of being stuck and, and something to do, um, this is one that, I've, uh, that I'm going to be doing. I actually already bought the supplies last week in anticipation of this is probably going to happen, and that is cleaning your gear. You know, um, uh, I'm going to be cleaning all my sensors. That's where I bought the sensor cleaners and going to do all that over this time because I really just, I can always, I always see the specs. I always see the little things oh, yeah. that you just build up over time. Well, Eric, um, you shoot skies too. That's where all yeah. that stuff shows up yeah. the most. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you have a I had sky it today, in the shot. I had it today in like one of those shots, there's like this 
little, little spot that just every shot, you got to go take out that little spot. All right. Hey, can I, can I mention something about that? Yeah. So if you do have a little spot, so here's the thing about if you notice the spec on one of your images, mm -hmm. it's on all of your images yeah. and it's in the exact same place. One of one really cool feature about Lightroom's uh, auto sync feature is if yep. you, let's say that you bring in 785 images, you go to the first, select them all, select all 785. You go to the first image, you see a little spot in the sky, you click on it with the spot healing brush and it will remove that. Not just from that photo, it will remove that spot from all 785 images at the exact same time. And that's one of the cool things about it. Mm -hmm. But you'd have to still look at the images real quickly to know if, if, you, if, if your shots are all of the same thing, it'll be perfect. If they're all in the sky and you're, yep. you're on a tripod. But if then you get a close-up shot, that, that, re, that repair might be over something that you don't want it right, to right, fix. Right. But anyway, it's still, it's a huge time saver. But can I take that one step further, Eric? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because with the virus that we're dealing with, think about this. You've got your camera, you keep putting it up to your face again and again and again. Dave Williams has a great video out today on, on basically keeping your camera clean so you don't pick up something on your camera and then put it in your face. Oh yeah, definitely. And you know, that's one of the things because a lot of times uh, these, well, all these things live on surfaces. They yep. can't, most of them can live on surfaces. Uh, I don't say all ever, but you know, like most of them can live on surfaces like this. So. Uh, we want to keep those things clean. Yeah. And that's just the process of, yeah, just cleaning your gear. Uh, I'm also going to go through cleaning the tripods, oiling the tripods, that kind oiling, of stuff. Oiling? I've never oiled a tripod no, in my life. No, I have. I, well, I, I, I abuse mine. I, they, you do. They're, you're they're, awful to your equipment. They're, they're abused. Yeah, so. your stuff, you know, your stuff's almost exploding on a weekly yes, basis. Yes, exactly. So. Hey, but Dave, I want to mention Dave Williams' stuff. If you're here on, if you're watching us on Facebook right now, because you can watch us on Twitter, on Facebook, on our Kelby One member site, you can watch us on YouTube, all over the place. But if you're watching us on Facebook, uh, earlier today, not only did I share Dave's video, but if you go to Dave's Facebook page, and there's a link to it there, um, he did an ebook basically on on keeping clean and stay. He did a, an ebook, like go check it out. He said it's crude, but it's out. It's already ready. Yeah. So go check out Dave Williams. He writes yep. the uh, Travel Tuesdays on Dave, uh, which I got to imagine now is is don't travel with Dave well, Tuesdays. I, David contacted me. That's a. Uh, I think we were also gonna. Um he he was said hey share you can share this with Kelby one members so I think we're gonna po post that in the uh, toolkit as well for people oh all right so there yeah. you go Dave good on Dave so um, there was a question in here that I, oh oh no it was a comment it was a funny one so Sam Haddix said Sam try photographing dogs at f22 all the time talk about sensor dust oh yeah, yeah. f22 it's, yeah. you'll see that sensor you can see everything if there's anything on there you'll everything. be able to see it. Yep. Hey, um, anyway, I'm, there's, there's so many uh, comments here. Uh, Alex, I'm going to answer yours, but this is typical of what we would answer on the webcast on Friday. So uh, Alex asks, when you're saving files, do you save as TIFF for printing? Never, ever, ever, never save a file as TIFF. You can put it on Twitter. Scott said, never save a file as TIFF. TIFF files are huge. The quality is no better than saving it as a PSD. If you're going to save it as anything, save it as a PSD, but I save everything as a JPEG. I just save it as a high quality JPEG. You look at the cover of Photoshop User Magazine, printed like in really high quality, go back through the years and look, all of them JPEG, 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 JPEG. Don't, TIFF is, TIFF is for suckers. But don't you think that that came from kind of back in the day? Yes, yes. there was a time. There was a time. Do you know why you so needed TIFF? That's why I think that is. Look how my hand just goes off. <laughs> yeah. There was a time we needed TIFFs because a lot of photographers were winding up giving their images to graphic designers. Yep. And at that time, you had to give them a TIFF because they couldn't place it in Quark Express or they couldn't place it. In. Of course, now... I mean, we're talking like turn of the century. You're stuff. talking like 20 years ago, but these are those, those things I, that never go I, away. I do remember this vaguely. No, yeah. it was true. It was a yeah. real thing. You used to have to do it in no, TIFF. No, no, and that's why I brought it up because I think it is a legacy thing that we're just... Oh, we think oh, PSD. TIFF is associated with 
quality of the file. No, it's not. It's yeah. not a better quality file. Save it as a PSD. That's Photoshop's own format. It does compress and make the file nice and small without losing quality. It's really, really good. PSD or JPEG. I saved my JPEGs out of Photoshop with a quality rating of 10. So, so Michael wants to know, what about PNG? PNG is a compressed, way compressed format. Don't save it as PNG. PNG is, is like a transparent web format. Yeah. Don't look. If you need transparency, this is easy. Stop if you overthinking need transparency it. Transparency for the web. Yeah. Yeah. Stop overthinking it. Save it as a freaking PSD, and I save everything or as a JPEG. a JPEG. Yeah. I do JPEG as well. I do, I do JPEG. The same thing. Quality of ten and out I'll of Photoshop. You, I mean, quality of eight out of Lightroom. You can get whole wall prints. Yeah. You can get giant wall prints. It's like oh. And then the nice part is that JPEG can go. Anywhere. That JPEG can go anywhere. You never go to the web. Like, it can go. Well, can I upload it here? Can I can I do it here? It can, can go it anywhere. Yep. Hey, Julie says yes. Tiff is old, old, old school. Don't do it. Yeah, Julie. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yep. And and then Magnus is saying That's... PNG is way too compressed. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, don't do it. Hey, Sam Attic says, what about JPEG 2000? It sounds futuristic. No, it nothing sounded, from nothing sounded, from twenty it years ago. Futuristic. It had nothing that. from twenty years ago sounds futuristic, Sam. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay. the bills want to know what about DNG? No, we're not going down this <laughs> path. <laughs> just freaking save just it. Just keep on going. What about Pixar files? <laughs> what about large format files? Let's let's go through the whole list of files, and then at the end, you know what we're gonna say? Save it as a PSD or a or JPEG. JPEG. Okay, can Got we it. go to number four? We're supposed to have 10 reasons yep, we're yep. running out of time. Yep. So number four is uh, watch online mm -hmm. classes. You know, that's one of the things that we could do at this time. I mean, there's, there's, we have, there's a lot of entertainment out there, you know, that we can stream in. But one, yeah. of, the, one of the things that we have a lot of access to, and I mean, that's what Kelby One is, right? It's a way to kind of, you know, you can go online, you can learn from the best instructors, you can watch that training yeah. right in your home. Right this one's TV. a little self-serving, I got to tell is. you. <laughs> it is. But, but we got some great classes. And you know what? You can go watch some of them for free right now. You can go get a free membership. They don't ask, yeah, they don't ask you, you for to, a credit card. If you go to the website, it's, it's kelbyone.com forward slash free. Yeah, forward slash free. Now, can I, can I plug a class? I, I would say if you want to watch, if you never watch one of our classes, and you thought, I've heard of you guys, I'm not sure. Go watch a class that I did called Crush the Composition. It is, it is one of my most commented on classes. Uh, I did a live version of it um, at the Google Plus Photographers Conference, and it was watched over a quarter million times just there. So you can go watch it. There it is, Crush the Composition. That's me. Well, I look better there because oh, yeah. it was a while ago. No, I remember that. That was a great class, All right. too. Yeah, it it, it, but I, I've gotten probably more emails and comments and stuff about that class than anything I've ever done in my whole career. So go check that out. That's something. What are your favorite classes? Uh, I tell you, the one, uh, well, there's a couple of them, but by the same person, and this, this has changed. This is like you want to know like, what's changed my photography the most. Why my why why I love like doing photography is Jay Maisel. So Jay Maisel's classes, like, Jay. like he's one of those guys where you, you really gotta. It's one of those type of classes where you gotta kind of sit down and really absorb it because he's doing all these with nuggets a glass of, of wine. Uh, yeah, he's doing all these nuggets of like deep wisdom. But if you start absorbing these things, like I apply it to all my rocket photography. Like all my rocket photography. Like, I'm always thinking of the things that Jay has said over the years. All right, you're close. You know. Keep going a little further. There it is. Yeah. I mean, start with, those, start with there. Start with the day with Jay. Start with the day with Jay Maisel. I'm telling you, that class will change your photography if you really let it. And that's, I think, the key there is you got to let it change your photography. Because when you start hearing these things that he's saying and let it absorb, that's when you realize, like, I, I have to look for the photo. I have to look for the moments and not just shoot. And that's, that's changed my photography a lot. I mean, yeah. even this morning when I was shooting, like, I was walking around trying to find stuff, trying to, you know, figure out where. And you got to work within certain limitations, but you're always like, well, where's my light going to come from? Uh, what's going to be that emotion? And he calls it the gesture. Oh, yeah. And, you know, what's it, it's the It's one colors? of the best classes ever. 
yeah. from anybody yep. anywhere, Jay's a day with Jay Maisel is a is a and then and then on top of that, I mean honestly, I love Dave Black's glasses. I love Dave Black's glasses. I think that's another thing of just I love how he talks about um, these things that are seem so simple once he says it, but it's complex to really apply oh, yeah. it. You know, like for example, I, that's what I was just talking about that this morning is, you know what? At the end of the day, fill in that frame, getting in tight, um, getting yep. the details, you know, and stuff like that. Like, just everybody can get the shot at at seventy or two hundred, but nobody's getting the shot at eight hundred. And what's that shot look like at eight hundred? So I mean, yeah, there's just definitely uh, there's just there's awesome stuff on there. I watch all of it. I watch it on my uh, we, and that's the thing is you can watch it on your Roku. Uh, I have a Roku at home. I watch it on there. I watch it on my Apple TV. We got the Apple TV. Um, watch it on my phone. I watch it on my tablet. I watch it on my computer. So just anywhere. All right. I'm going to pick a couple other classes if you're a Kelby One member. If you're not, you can always join. We, we would love that. Uh, yeah. Now's a great time to be learning online. But uh, I'm going to give you a couple other classes. Cliff Mountner. Cliff did a class where he got a bride and groom to agree to let us videotape his entire day. Now, Cliff is one of the top, he was literally rated one of the top wedding photographers in the United States. He's incredibly talented, just incredibly talented, educator and, and photographer. And we take you to a high-end wedding, our camera crews are right there with mm -hmm. him the whole time. It's, it's really, really just brilliant. So that's number one. I, I would go watch, if you're into wedding photography, even if you're not, I guarantee you'll learn a lot. Uh, another one is go watch Peter Hurley's headshot, like mastering the headshot. Watch his very first video is, is just tremendous. Go watch Kaylee Greer's class on photographing dogs. Uh, now, she has a number of them with us, but go watch her very first one. And I'll, I, when it pops up on screen, I'll show you which one it is. Uh, but her classes are brilliant, and she is a joy. Um, let's see what else. There's a couple well, of other ones. What is um, that? What is, um, you're talking the, the first one she did, right? Yeah, the very first one. Uh, um, it is keep going. going. I'll show you going. which one. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. It's not that one. It's not that one. Probably page two. Probably page two. There it is. Yeah. The secrets to capturing the best dog shots ever. Ever yeah. taken. That class literally put people in business, changed people's lives. That's, that's a killer class. Uh, another great one uh, to watch is um, Lindsay Adler did one on every, posing everyday people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure that's exactly people. the name, but it was. Yeah, it is. It's, um, well, it's, uh, yeah, maybe it's shooting every day, or maybe it's posing or phot photographing. Yeah, I think it's, yeah maybe photographing. photographing. Lindsay people. has a lot of classes with us as well. Thank goodness. I love her. Uh, keep going. Keep a going, yeah, keep a at, going. Look at all of them. Look at all, there it is. Photographing everyday, everyday people. people. That is really, really yep. a, an incredible course, and she is just so good. She yep. is such a great teacher. So I got, a, I got another one. I got another one, and this is, has a story to it. Okay. Right? So I am not a portrait photographer. I am not a flash photographer. I'm not any of that. However, sometimes you're I, a rocket man. However, sometimes I get a shot in my head, and I got to get a shot out. And um, a couple of years ago, I wanted to shoot a shot of my daughter in front of a rocket streaking over her. And I knew I was going to have to incorporate some flash and some portrait techniques. I actually watched your um, Just One Flash class. Yay. And that's how I ended up. Like, I literally watched the class, did some practicing, and then went out and did the shot. And, and it's become one of uh, And dude, my, that's your trademark shot, well, man. Well, it's become one of my best-selling hey, shots. Hey, can I interrupt for a second? Yeah. Because Eric was featured, is featured right now uh, in a feature story on DIY photography uh, that is all about how he got that shot. Yeah, that shot, exactly. And here it is, there yeah. it is. This is how to capture a rocket photo like Eric the Rocket Man Kuna. That's right, you are the real Rocket Man. Yeah, like There's that the shot. shot. That shot, that, that photo is partly because I had, I had to watch a class, I had to absorb the information that you're teaching, go apply that information in the shot to get the shot. Because you get these shots in your head and you're like, I gotta get it, I gotta get it out. Well, hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the stream here just on Facebook alone and uh, 
so many people are calling out their favorite classes. That's so mm -hmm. cool. I just saw a call out uh, to the lady from Dog Breath Photography. That's Kaylee that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, has an awesome class, and I just see a whole bunch of, uh, uh, let's see, uh, uh, David Zeiser's class. He has older classes, but his, his, his classes are older, but his classic wedding portraiture stuff is classic. I mean, they are absolutely classic. Anyway, thanks for the, you folks who are posting that stuff on here for other people to see, because there are so, so, so many, many great ones. All right. Um, um, so, you know, this is an interesting one. So John has a question, and I, th I think I would, it's got, he's asking, uh, in the current situation, do we have a discounted two or three month plan to keep us busy Why you know, we're, you know, you know cash flow's low, oh, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Um, that's an interesting one, but I would say for that, again, try out first, kelby1.com forward slash free. You're going to get a, a couple of these courses um, that you start, and then maybe by then, maybe we do have something like that. Well, we, we're just starting a series of webinars. Yep. They're live where we can yep. actually answer your questions. So they'll, I'll be sitting where Eric is. I'll be Yeah, we'll, we'll be reversed. We'll be reversed. I'll be over and there. And hopefully we'll be reversed on there, or actually the thing. Yeah, we'll be hey, flipped. you know what? Break Christine time. is in the chat, and Ron's over here too, and they're both telling us we need to take a break. Yeah, so Christine is not even here. She's in she, isolation. She's in isolation. She's in isolation for no reason, just, you know, the, <laughs> other than the social distancing. Ron is, a, is not, Ron's never been out here now, but Ron's a good, he's a good 10 or 12 feet from me and Eric. We're oh, keeping yeah. everybody separated, and if anybody gets close, we all have pepper spray, so we tss, tss, keep it. But yeah, we got to get through five more of these things. Yeah, we better, we better take a break. Yeah. All right, when we come back, we've got five through ten of uh, our ideas. So stick around, our favorites. Don't go away. Every serious photographer needs an online portfolio. It's kind of like it's the thing, right? You don't have to have a printed one anymore. It's nice. But what's really critical is that you at least have an online portfolio. Everybody needs one. The problem is they're expensive. you got to pay for them, you got to sign up for them, and now you're paying another monthly fee. What if I told you, you don't have to do that because it's already included in your Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. That's right, if you've got the Lightroom and Photography plan or the full Creative Cloud, you're already paying for a beautiful online website. Choose a theme, you've got a bunch of cool themes. In fact, take a look. You go to myportfolio.com and click on examples. They show you a bunch of other photographers and designers websites that are already there and if you see one that you like, it'll even tell you which theme to start with. So you choose your theme, you upload your images, you add your text, you hit publish, and it's live. You're already paying for it, and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step exactly how to do it. You can upload your images from your computer, you can go straight from Lightroom, you can add video, you can do so much. You're gonna be blown away at what you can do, and you're gonna be thrilled to know it doesn't cost you a penny more than you're already paying. So it's included in your Creative Cloud subscription. I'm gonna show you how to unlock this thing. You can have it up and running tonight. So go catch my brand new class on creating your online portfolio using Adobe Portfolio. It's exclusively at Kelby One.
This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Hey, everybody, we are back. Uh, Scott Kelby here with Eric Kuna, who's way over there in hey isolation. <laughs> All the way over here. Well, he's just 12 feet away, but it's yeah. not that far. Anyway, we're glad you guys are here. We're talking about 10 ideas of things you can do when we're all stuck inside. Uh, hey, I just saw a comment here, and we don't have this on our list. Uh, Karen mentioned it. I guess somebody mentioned it first, but I can't see that. And, and she was seconding someone's idea that said, this is a great time to put your portfolio together. Absolutely. And I just did Especially a class on Adobe if you Portfolio. Have, uh, if you have Lightroom and Photoshop and you have Adobe Portfolio because it comes with it's already it. included, yeah. yeah. All right, that wasn't on our list, but I wish, I wish it was. That was yeah, a great, great idea. Yeah, you just did, a, you just did a, uh, updated class on it. So. so someone said we should offer a couple of classes for free. <laughs> we have classes for free for you. Yeah, Everyone.com yeah. forward slash free. I believe you can yeah. get almost a, it's like 10 Here's classes. Here's like 10 classes. Go to kelbyone.com slash free. You know, Usually cost like yeah. 50 bucks. Yeah, they're yeah. usually like 50 bucks. Yeah. And they're like free. Free, 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 free. Okay. Uh, let's, let's, we better get on our list, Eric. Where, where are we yep, at? Yep, We're on number five. So the number five was learn a genre of photography they haven't thought of or, or you haven't done yet, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. They're, they're, we get into the things that we do. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, I mentioned earlier about watching that class, even if you're not into that. You know, sometimes tr you will find something that you, thought, I wonder if that's flower photography. I wonder if flowers are any good or still life, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, so. Oh, it's amazing too, if you really do this, because you can take, and what it's gonna do, I, I, at least in what it's done for me, is it's actually helped the genres that I'm really into. Yes. By going into other yes, genres, yes. you take stuff out of that. I remember talking to Tracy about this, and just like the things she talks about with, with her photography, I was able to apply some of that to rocket photography, which is like, what? Why could you? I, but it's it's amazing how you can do that and make those transitions. So sometimes exposing yourself to these different genres will then enhance what your your really what your genre is. So this would be a great time to kind of take on some of those new challenges. If you've always said, well, I don't know what you know, floral photography or still lifes or yeah, you know, I I took Tim Wallace's class on automotive photography. Right, and, yeah. and I, I had never done it, and I had never had any idea. And Tim's class was so great. I the first time I went out, I had great success with it, and that was a genre I'd never tried before, and fell in love with it. But just like what you just said, Eric, I took things from that that yep. automotive class and applied it to other classes, to yep. portraiture, because you'll wind up using. I was using strip banks with grids, and I hadn't used grids a bunch. Now I'm using grids. It was just, it, it's a great class. I, yep. I mean. It's a great class, but learning another genre will help whatever genre you already do. Yeah, I guarantee it, yep. Number six. So number six is organizing your image library. It's time. Yes. Your Lightroom library is a mess. And or worse yet, you're going, I'm still using the bridge. Uh-oh. This is that time you've been waiting for your whole life. I need, I need to get organized. This is the time. It starts with number two, which was get everything on a drive. Get every, get yeah, all your get drives everything backed, backed up. up. That's get more everything important. Organized in a file system, right? But once you have your drives organized, then organizing in Lightroom is quite easy. Uh, my Slim system, of course, covers that. But this is the time where you need to start actually getting organized. You've got that. We finally have the time. Now, I, I see some of you. I'm looking at the comments. Uh, I don't usually look at the comments. that We get them fed to us on this giant screen that we have in here. Uh, but uh, I'm actually looking at the Facebook feed while Eric's way over there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I see some of you, like, they're like, we're having to work at home. Just like our folks, we're not here in the office, right? Yeah. But we're still having to work until the weekends. But catch up on this stuff on the weekends. And, and as, as much as you can, number one, when you're kind of working at home like this, it it's, can be very lonely and isolating. And it can also stifle your creativity. It doesn't hurt to take a break out and just watch a couple of lessons and let it pump you back up. So, because even when I'm working at home and I, I do quite a bit of writing at home and things and all, I have to take breaks. You just, it's not like when you have interactions with people and Eric comes by your office and says, hey, what about this and all? I'm like, now Eric's forbidden to come by my office. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it won't hurt to do that. Now we just uh, we now's have to the, call. Now's a good we time. Call, text. 
Yeah, now's a good time. And you can chunk away at it. You don't have to say, I'm going to do yep. all of it tonight. Yep. You can say, I'm going to just do backup first, or I'm just going to organize A through E today, and then mm -hmm. we'll do, you know, whatever. All right, that was number six. Number seven, this is a really good one. Yeah. Eric came up with this one. So this is scanning and restoring old photos. Yes. You know? And actually, I'll tell you where this comes from is, is actually my mother. Uh, so my mother said, you know, hey, look, at, you know, I know I'm going to have downtime. I'm going to have downtime here, right? I need to, we have all these photos. We have the shoebox of photos. We have all these negatives. Maybe we should take that time and start backing up this stuff digitally. I mean, we have it physically, but then backing it up digitally. Because that's something that, you know, um, it's hard if we don't have it digitally to then transfer it to other people and transfer it around. So it would really be cool to just back up and restore your old photos and just take that, uh, those old photos and then back them up in that backup system that Scott talked about. So on your drives, then on a, you know, a cloud service or something like that. And then still, it's in your shoebox or whatever kind of organizational tool you have. Don't ever throw away the shoebox. Yeah. Keep the shoebox. Yeah. But get, I think scanning and restoring those images, what a great time to do this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's so easy nowadays. I think that's where she's at. You know, um, I tried to get, we tried to get this done years ago. I mean, fucking years ago. And it was very tedious, very hard. It's really pretty easy. I mean, there's stuff that you can even buy... Uh, to mount your iPhone, I mean, this is not something, I mean, obviously, if you're watching the show, this is not something you would do, uh, but there's, there's better ways. But you can even take your iPhone camera and put it in a box. They have like a light box, and then it'll right. like shoot, and then you're just basically loading in those photos into your camera. Instead roll. of scanning. Yeah, instead right. of scanning. But you so. know, why that actual box thing is good, though, is because... People have a hard time getting good flat light. Yeah, that, well, that's what the light box is very good. I mean, you know, that's what, that is a technique. So, but that's, I mean, I guess that's one thing that you would have to learn in this process is what are you going to use? Are you going to use a scanner? Are you going to use some kind of like capturing it with a camera or something yep. like that? But it's definitely something that it's a good time to do it. And it's something that you really want to do to, re, to preserve those memories. All right. Yep. I got number eight. Now, yep. this, this one is very specific. It's the only one that is actually specific to Kelby One members. But we have this online community. So every time that we post a class, you can go discuss that class. There is a, a discussion about just that class with the instructors and with the other students. But there's this whole giant community. I'm going to brag because I think it is, is the best online community anywhere because we police it for friendliness at a crazy level. So it is created the most helpful, most friendly, most non-judgmental, awesome place to go online. And you can make so many friends. This is a, such a great, great community. It really is. And if you have a question, if you're stuck on something, you'll, you'll, be, a, you'll be stunned at how quickly you will get answers. And I see yeah. people all the time that say, this is my first time on here. I'm just kind of new. And they're scared because if you go on a public forum, people will eat you alive. That yeah, will not you're happen. New, it's almost like it's like 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 bait. They're, they're waiting for <laughs> you waiting. outside, but inside our walls, I'm telling you guys, it is it is a very very happy place. There's a lot of great people, and literally all over the world, you will make friends and make connections. You'll be so. I would recommend if you're a Kelby One member and you haven't gone there. There's Cheeky Nando. Cheeky Nando one of the best guys on the planet and he's in there all the time he's so helpful yep. and, and we have moderators and leaders there community leaders that are there to help you and and there's just so many rob sylvan's in there all kinds of folks are in there i'm in there eric lives yep. in there yep. and you'll you will love it and well, that's the other thing is uh, it's also a place where um at this time you know too uh, and it's been going on there for years but especially at this time uh, we uh, can interact with each other with, uh, we have challenges, we have member challenges, we have uh, uh, contests. Yep. Um, things where we're just sharing, like people open up a thread just like, hey, uh, share um, your best uh, pet photo. And, you know, and people are just sharing and, and being able to kind of go in there and, and um, just encourage each other. Yeah, so. it really is a very inspirational, fun yeah. place. Number nine. This is another yep. one that Eric came up with. I, I do this on a regular basis. When Eric said he does it all the time, I'm like, I do the same thing. 
Yeah, and this is something we, we both do, and it's uh, revisiting photos they haven't touched in a while and re-editing them with the, your new skills. So basically, we're constantly learning new skills, new techniques. The other thing is, software's just being updated. Like, yeah, like, Lightroom's getting like better, Photoshop's I re getting better. I re when the texture slider was released in Lightroom, I went back to a lot of Rocket photos, because the texture slider <laughs> was like magic. It was oh. like, oh, what's happening? So yeah, just going back and kind of revisiting your old photos, um, you know, applying these new techniques to it, and uh, seeing what you can make out of it. Cause, and then it's too, what's cool about that too, is you see how far you've come. You know, because you could look back at, oh, well yeah. here was my edit four years ago. Now you take that same raw photo and you process it the way you would now, and you're it's like, night and day. wow, I didn't even know I could take it that far. So just try that. Yeah. Hey, can I give you guys a tip about the, the texture slider? Because Eric mentioned it and, and the texture slider. So we have texture and clarity. We've been using clarity has been our go-to slider. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people to think of clarity as bringing out detail, which it does, but there's a downside to clarity. When you drag that clarity slider, it also changes the tone of the image because what it's really doing is applying mid-tone contrast. Yep. Yep. So when you drag the clarity slider, it, it puts a look on your image. If you go too far, it looks kind of grungy. It can make things look a little dirty. Yeah, if you go that, too far, like Peter, you're like, oh, Yeah, you up too much clarity. Slider. All right, however, texture brings out detail without changing your tone. Yep. It doesn't change the tone, it just brings out the detail. Now, that does not mean we stop using the clarity slider, because the clarity mm -hmm. slider can have a really good look to it, and I will generally use them in tandem. Yeah, I'm, I'll apply a, a lot yang, of texture and a, a little yang. bit of clarity. Yeah, it's like a balance. You know, you're but using it, both of them. Yes, but but clarity is is I think become the new hero. But that doesn't mean we've forgotten about clarity. Just remember texture, yeah, texture. texture hero. Yep. Uh, clarity yeah. is its sidekick. Yep. Yep. Te texture was like, yeah, I went back to Texture's a lot of photos a big one. when that texture slide. So came that's out. it. All right, number ten. This is yep. number ten. I've got a multi-week thing for you to do, and it started last week or maybe a, a few days before. So on my blog, I said, come with me on a journey about your photography. So I'm, I'm giving you these things to do to help you to have a, an awakening about your photography and to give you a path about your photography. We're only to step two, there's four steps. So there's steps two, and I'm doing one like one a week. So step one uh, was, let me give you the date if we don't have it pulled up there. Let me just tell you when it was. It's on my blog on scottkelby.com. And that way we have something to do for the next you know, few weeks. It was, hey, who is my guest blogger today? It's Sam Haddix. I hadn't been to my yeah, blog yet Sam. today. Sam Haddix, yeah. great portrait photographer, is a Kelby One instructor, great kick-ass guitar player, super nice guy, like one of the best guys out there. He could be Fernando of America. And a 50 millimeter portrait master. And a guy that can, that can wield, a 50 millimeter is a very, very hard lens to make great pictures with. He yep. makes great pictures with it. All right, hang on, I, wanna, I want to, um, like if you really, if you're really that person who's like, ah, 50 millimeter, ah, that's all I need. Like, really, you gotta. Study you gotta his watch work. this thing. All right, yeah. February 28th. That's when my thing. It's the name of the post on my on my blog, is called "Come with me on a journey about your photography." So start at February 28th, and I give you instructions on what to do. Now the instructions that I give you what to do, you don't have to leave your house. You can do all of this inside. This is all a. This is all a mental thing. So there it is, That's, so start there, and I give you a list of what you have to do, and it's gonna take a little bit of doing. <laughs> it's gonna take some, some thoughtful, t you, you gotta think. All right, then, then there's part two. Now part two, I released, hold on, part two was March 16th. So March 16th was part two, and this in the coming week I'm doing part three. Part two was harder than part one. Part one was fun and, and eye-opening for you because, well, you'll have to read it. Part two, well, should I go through what they are? I can just tell you real quick, yeah. right? So part one was for you to go on Instagram, and it's specifically on Instagram, and find 20 to 25 of the images 
that that you want to make like other photographers images like that's the kind of shot I want to be making so let's say that you're a portrait photographer you go to Instagram you go to hashtag portrait look at the feed that comes up and and then you go ooh that that's the kind of image because portraits can be all over the place there's a tremendous difference in quality and subject and type and all so you need to go and find these are the type of images that I want to make like I want to look at my portfolio one day and go yeah that's the kind of stuff I'm doing that's step one so you you make a screen capture of each one of those and then now you have on your phone 20 to 25 images of the type of images that you want to make that's step one you think you'll whip through that it's harder than you think but it's it's easy compared to step two step two is and that's the one I just released is I teach you how to analyze an image. So the blog post says how to look at one of those images. So you take the first image and I have you break it down and analyze that image. Now I give you a checklist to ask yourself these questions. I give you 10 questions and a bonus question that you would ask about this image. You have to write the answers down for part three. So you can't just kind of look at it and go, oh, it's this, it's that, the other. You got to do this. You got to do it with me. But I'm telling you what, the payoff at the end is going to be an eye-opening thing for you. It's going to help. It's, I think it's going to move you way forward in, in your photography because it's going to give you a path and a goal and a better understanding of what makes a great photo. And I think that's a huge thing. So I analyze, I show you how to analyze an image and then I give you two images, an aviation image and a portrait. And, we, and I actually break them down for you. I go, here's when I look at this photo, here's how I, I see it. And then you got to write that down and meet me for part three, which is on Monday. So cool. coming up is part three is Monday. And then we'll wrap up with part four the following week. And uh, you will have done a bit of work, but it's all indoors. It's all safe. So there you go. So that was my number 10 because cool. it'll take up some of your time, but I think it'll be, I think you'll be, you're investing in your own photography. It doesn't cost you anything, stuff you can do on your phone or on your laptop. Uh, if you want to do it on your computer, go download an application called Grids, G-R-I-D-S, not anything you do with us, sadly. It is a beautiful viewer for looking at Instagram photos on your computer, and it is awesome. And it's free, I think, or it used to be free. Grids, G-R-I-D-S, and it is really, really nice. Those are my 10, and we're like three minutes over. Yeah, we're three minutes over, and do we want to take our final break, or do we? We're supposed to take another break, but we've kind of, with this whole setup, kind of, it's, has it? Yeah, so here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to watch these commercials. Wait, we have, do we have giveaways? We do, don't we? Yeah, then we'll do the giveaways when All we right. get back. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break. Leave us a yep. comment. If you haven't left a comment yet, leave us a comment. We're going to pick our winners from the commenters. So just go real quick in there. I'll tell you what we're giving away. We're giving away my Natural Light Portrait Book. There it is. Yep, there it is. Wow. That worked well. Anyway, we're giving away a copy of my Natural Light Portrait book, and we're going to give away a Platypod Ultra. You saw the ad. You know how awesome this is. This was last year's Kickstarter, darling. Now there's this year's. Anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break, watch the commercials, make sure you put a comment in. We're going to grab some winners. We'll give them away in just a minute. Don't go away. Hi there, Cubby One members. Corey Barker here with Master FX Training. And now, this time around, we are going to be talking about 3D compositing. Now, we've talked about 3D. We've talked about compositing. Now, we're going to talk about 3D compositing. And what we're going to be doing is creating custom 3D scenes 
from a variety of 2D sources. Now, one of the key factors here is that we're going to be using the principles of photography. We're going to be building a composite. We're going to be using depth of field. We're going to be using lighting effects, backlighting effects. These are all things that you would construct when you're doing a photo shoot. We're going to do it all inside of Photoshop. I hope you'll join me in checking out these newest courses on KelbyOne.com. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Heaps and I'm excited to share with you my course on KelbyOne.com, A Guide to Commanding Color. In this course, we're going to actually look at the basic principles of color design and theory, the science of light and how it impacts our workflow in Photoshop and Lightroom, and also how to add that cinematic mood and design to our images with color grading. So if you want to learn how to command color, make sure you check out my course on KelbyOne.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free, and we even have a special audio-only version, too. So sign up today. Hey, folks, we're back. Scott Kelby here with a quarantined Kuna. Yeah. Well, <laughs> That's what we called him. Yeah, quarantined. Yeah. Not really quarantined, just <laughs> no. kind of over there. He's just... We're social distanced. We are socially distanced. Yeah. So, um... Did you get some winners? Yes, we did. We got winners. So um, for your book, we have uh, David Crooks uh, is winning your book. And then Tiffany R. is winning the Platypod. Oh, congratulations and, uh, to you guys. So if you guys just contact, uh, you send an email to gridprize at kelby1.com. That's gridprize at kelby1.com. And then uh, we'll get you your prize. We'll get you set up. Mm -hmm. All righty. Well, we've pretty much run out of time for today. Um, I will tell you a couple of things. Uh, number one, do what we do. Keep the hell away from Kuna. Just keep him away. Not anybody else, really. It's just Eric. Well, you know, I mean, uh, we had some great comments here at the end. Uh, you know, I think uh, that's what we wanted. That's what we're wanting to do here is give people, you know, um, things to do. This is what we can do, like we talked about in the beginning. Um, that's why we're doing the webcast on Friday and stuff like that. But like, you know, I, I got a couple here, like Susan Hoffman was saying, I was feeling down about being stuck home alone, but now you've got me excited to do all, all, all the photography things I never had time to do. And that's really what the, the goal here and the goal yeah. of these webcasts are, uh, yes. stuff like that. That makes my we, day. I'm yeah. little, I love hearing that. Yep. And then uh, Shelly was saying, uh, Shelly uh, Smith-Wood was saying, uh, really excellent list. Um, I'm getting started on these right away to help with the anxiety. So, you oh, know, there's just, a, there's just, that's what we can do is just keep our minds off that stuff, focus on what we, uh, you know, love to do as photographers, and really at the end of the day, like kind of making images to share with the world, you know? Yeah, so. and you know what? Uh, when, when we do focus on being creative, when we focus on that stuff, it makes us happy. When we mm -hmm. read the news over and over and over again, it doesn't. So this is a great time, but I, I want you to put this in context. Let's say that during this next month or six weeks, however long we're all kind of boxed in like this, that you work on these things, that you get your portfolio up and you, you know, start doing these things. You go through one by one and you start knocking them off. When this awful virus has passed us, you will be so set up for success. You'll be in such a great place. You'll have done all these things that you've wanted to do. You'll be further along. You'll have learned new techniques. You'll be excited. You'll be energized. And mm -hmm. I tell you what, when this thing is done, it's going to be a great, I mean, people are going to be so relieved yep. and overjoyed yep. and stuff. And, and it's not going to be an easy walk through this. This is, this is tough on everybody yeah. and it's tough on every industry. It's tough. I can tell you it's tremendously tough on the photographic industry. When you think uh -huh. of all the photographers that are, that are sitting on their gear and there's, you're making payments on gear and things like that and there's just not a lot of opportunities right now yeah. uh, for everybody and that, that affects everybody. It goes to retouchers because if the photographers aren't shooting, the retouchers aren't getting the jobs. Absolutely. Cameras aren't being sold. I mean, it, it, is, it, it ripples through everything. I feel tremendously bad for folks that are in the uh, hospitality industry. 
oh, and yeah. in the event industry and all those, which we're partly in the event industry, but I'm talking about the people that, you know, work at these venues. Well, it's even that, like you were talking about earlier, like, uh, you know, just uh, uh, a lot of portrait photographers. People just don't want to be around other people to take, yeah. even take pictures or uh, wedding photographers. You know, there's a lot of weddings that, because um, I know some wedding photographers, wedding videographers, you know, close friends and stuff like that, and they want to work. And actually, people, some people want to have their wedding, too, because they've been planning this forever, sure. but they can't have it anywhere. I mean, yeah. it just comes down to there's just nowhere. The now, it's at that close. point where that's just, that's what's happening now, is we can't even have weddings, and we can't, it's just right now how the climate is out there. But, but... These are the right things to do. It's the right thing Staying to do. Staying separated yeah. like this, washing our hands to death, doing all mm. this stuff, it's going to get us to the other side. I hope that the things that we presented to you today are yep. things that'll keep you busy, keep you focused on the good things in our lives, and keep you focused on let's stay hunkered down, do your thing, yep. stay indoors, stay healthy. We really, really wish all of you to be healthy to be productive, creative, and we will get through this and we'll, be all, we'll all be that much better on the other side of this. Absolutely. Thanks to all of our sponsors and thanks to everybody for watching all over the world. We so appreciate you guys and we're sending good thoughts your way. And uh, are we gonna have a grid next Wednesday? Um, there, there's plans to, I, I, oh, oh no, no, be, oh. actually we don't have a grid next Wednesday. You know why? Because of my uh, the, Los Angeles seminar. seminar, but we did talk about possibly doing that at a different special time. Yeah. So we might do it with the day before or something. Maybe we actually talked about doing it that morning and trying something different. Where oh yeah. Actually we could do that. Grid. We could do it that morning because the seminar mm -hmm. is in Los Angeles. So it starts. So it starts one at one o'clock here. here and I'll be going on at one. And yeah, uh, we could do that. Yeah, we could do that. I'm going to miss everybody in LA, you know, LA and oh, Houston. Yeah. I, I get yeah. to go to those. There's, those are such great towns to do seminars in, you know, the LA crowds are great. Houston, such great people, such great food. I yeah, have family you know, in Houston. It, it, it will be, but you know, at the same time, again, it's the right thing to do, uh, you know, stuff oh, like I that. Know. But, um, the people, people are still going to be able to, uh, chat with us, uh, converse with us. Oh yeah, uh, we'll still be taking questions. Them, and taking questions. Absolutely. Um, you know, we did this already um, a couple years ago for like Europe and Australia where yep. we, there's seminars we just can't take to these areas. So it's not yep. like the first time we've done that. Yeah, yeah. So, this is our first rodeo. Yeah. So. Anyway, thank you guys. Thank you very much, Eric. Thanks, Ron, yeah. over in his isolation area. Thanks to Jason, the digital surgeon. The di there he is. Man, he brought that up fast. Let me tell you, I've never seen him quicker <laughs> quicker the on the feed surgeon. the digital surgeon is hey on. i'll tell you what the digital surgeon i was out with him uh, uh we were doing uh something in um over at kennedy um and he shot a shot of this tree and stuff i don't know he hasn't posted it yet but it was really cool dude the digital surgeon can shoot he yeah. and juan are very talented photographers for being videographers i guess we shouldn't be surprised yeah i mean right? that's a it kind of trend yeah, yeah i know was, but they're still. actually they would say that they're shooting it 30 pictures a second or 40 pictures a second or, yeah. you know, or 24 pictures a second. So they're just look at the product pictures. stuff that Wani's doing. Yeah. Look at that. I'm surprised he didn't change the label to be Don Juan. Okay. That was lame. There you go. Look All right, that. guys, have a great week. Stay healthy. We'll catch you next time. Yeah. We'll see you Friday. See you Friday.